I can. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Good. Let's see if I can uh, take host here. <laughs> can I give you host? No, I'm not host. Yeah, I'm I also a guest. Right. Let's see here. Usually I can click more. <laughs> Alex, how are you? Oh. Good. 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 I'm still trying to figure out the Didcom React Native Library. Maybe we can try to do some building today. Hey, guys. Hi. Cool. Hey, Judith. Hello. Hmm. Usually, I can go to participants, click on my own name, and take oh here we go claim host they've just changed it a little bit that's all sweet i think i am i'm host now unlimited power okay um and it looks like we're already recording so that's great too hey roto lance hey then good good, good to see you Okay. Judith, do you, uh, so last uh, meeting we had Hakan and Alex and Roto and myself. Do, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and I maybe let so. us, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm writing my master thesis in the area of software and identity and the idea is to implement it can be two for Akapai and Hakan is actually my supervisor. <laughs> oh, good. Thesis, so yeah. <laughs> That's Great, cool. awesome. Yeah, great to have you. Are you on um, Discord with us? Just, uh, just yes, so I'm I also know. on the Discord channel. Okay. And um, let me, do I know your Discord handle? Do you know what it is? Maybe I've seen you on there or have you posted there? And uh, Not yet. Okay. Yeah, no <laughs> worries. No worries. Baron, how are you? I called him out. No worries. Maybe he's not ready. Or he just muted. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Trying. Okay. No worries. Take your time. Cool. Okay. And let's see. I'll bring up our page as well for today. And hold on. Let me publish it so I can post the link to you guys. Okay, got that. Um, that's our link for today, and I can share my screen. Share. That one. Okay. Don't judge uh, all my tabs. <laughs> Probably should have closed those before uh, this, but that's all right. Okay, so feel uh, uh, so welcome to the Aries Didcom V2 Working Group uh, for November 28th, uh, 2022. Happy to see everybody here. Um, we are now on Zoom, so you guys have made it here. I guess I'll double check, make sure no one's asking, because we met on Google Meet last uh, time, just because I didn't know if they were going to get everything set up, but they did. Aries is great, great community. Um, please feel free to add yourself to the attendees list uh, for today if you like. Um, we just have to remember the uh, antitrust policy for Hyperledger, um, also the code of conduct uh, for Hyperledger, which maybe I don't have a link to, but um, you should be able to find it on Confluence, um, and maybe I'll link to it on our future meetings. And essentially, uh, yeah, this group, um, this is our second meeting i think our second meeting maybe third uh and uh our goal is to um see didcom v2 adoption within aries uh accelerating um so for some that is a, a focus on didcom v1 transitioning to didcom v2 and then for others that is just adding a didcom uh, implementation to their aries agent or let's say a mediator or um 
yeah, some component within the Aries ecosystem. So we think if uh, Didcom V2 can uh, be successful here, uh, then, you know, it can be successful out, outside of here. Uh, you know, Roots ID, which I'm associated with, for instance, has customers outside of Aries that uh, are, are very interested in Didcom V2. Uh, but then they're also very aware of Aries and they want to interop with Aries agents. Uh, so if we can all get Didcom V2, going uh within the aries ecosystem then we think adoption outside will will be rapid and uh well satisfying for us so let's go through any uh well welcomes uh so judith introduced herself that's great um baron most of us already know if he wants to say anything go for it baron but no pressure uh, let's I see. oh yeah yeah hey. It works awesome. Um, so I'm I'm uh, Berend. I mainly work on uh, AFJ as a maintainer, and I've also been working on my own Didcom V2 library in pure TypeScript. Uh, so that's also basically why I joined because I thought maybe there were some questions or something uh, that I can help with. Yeah, that's great. Um, where, where are you joining from, by the way, Berend? From which company? Uh, which uh, continent? Uh, Animal Solutions, Continent, Europe, Country, the okay, Netherlands. Okay, Animal. Cool. Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, Baron. Uh, right, he has his implementation that he's uh, been building up uh, in TypeScript. I think Alex uh, from Roots ID is also looking at that. Um, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. And then... I um, am yeah, I am, and I do have a couple questions, actually. Like I was trying to implement it on our wallet, and uh, some of the imports with the native libraries were failing. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, I've been playing around with your library as well as uh, the SIGPAD um, React Native in the past, like, week, pretty much. So, yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, that's super exciting. Uh, so yeah, we'll cover that for sure today. Let me put that uh, on our d discussion topics. Uh, yeah, uh, TypeScript uh, implementation. Talk about that. Um, okay, and I also see Schnorr on the on the call. If you want to say anything, Schnorr, you know, go for it. Um, he, he's uh, if I can do a quick introduction just from my point of view, uh, him and Alex uh, did a bunch of work uh, on the JFF challenge leading up to IIW, which we all just attended or a bunch of us just attended. Uh, that was really cool. And I've gotten to sit in some of the meetings with uh, with them and just see uh, them working through some of the interop issues for, for Didcom V2. And uh, that's been really useful. Um, just watching, you know, separate teams basically all the collaboration that they have to do. Yeah, admittedly, it's more than maybe um, we'd like, you know, a team to have to do. But uh, you know, these are the growing pains of this, and and so in a lot of ways, their efforts um, have been uh, have driven the the creation of this group and this meeting, um, so that we can kind of capture some of these elements to help people to um, be able to navigate the didcom v2 implementations and some of the pain points and you know finding the quickest path basically so that's good stuff you want to say anything Schnorr? i think you covered most of it <clears throat> uh but yeah i'm from diwala uh we're using didcom v2 self-made uh so we had to adopt sigma library for primarily encryption decryption um and um yeah that's where we at so i just wanted to jump in and see what's going on over here yeah that's that's great i'm just trying to pull up our um the spreadsheet that i've been doing that's uh, a bit of a didcom uh yeah aries didcom v2 support yeah go ahead Edwin, quick, quick question. Um, you are not using an Aries framework, but you are using Didcom, if I understood you correctly, right? In your software um, solution. That's true. Okay, cool. No, that's that's also super interesting. So yeah, uh, it's going to be an interesting conversation to see how we can connect these two worlds because this was one of the topics that we were talking about last week. Um, due to the fact that uh, Aries 
as a uh, framework is all using uh, connections as a concept and um, there came the question or like uh, yeah a question mark basically how how we can make sure that uh, we can create like areas uh, sorry didcom v2 uh, communication relationship whatever you want to call it with an aries agent and a uh, non aries based software yeah yeah also we that's we, we're not done with the jff yet but that's where we do see we had to break off very early um because the three people who did not use aries um or the, the people who did use areas did not were not comfortable enough in trying to adjust what's needed to be adjusted to meet meet each other. Mm -hmm. So the we had to kind of separate each other between two groups. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So. Um, uh... To, to just kind of show how I'm trying to uh, connect some of these dots, uh, if I go to the references section here, um, I put the JFF Didcom V2 notes uh, in here. And uh, if I bring those up, hopefully you guys are okay with me sharing this uh, with the group. Um, it, it's just really interesting uh, to kind of walk through the kind of questions uh, and um, uh, the information that's been uh, captured here in terms of uh, what parts of Didcom uh, are important, you know, where 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 uh, do we find conflicts or or uh, difficulty, um, things like that. So I thought this document was really uh, helpful. Um, I guess I should be yeah, that would be posting great. posting links to these things. <laughs> let me do let me do my job. Uh, let's see here. Now my interface has changed because I'm sharing, and so then I go back to the chat. Yep, here we go. So this is the survey uh, document, which has a link to the JFF uh, in the references section. Um and and. Yeah. So the point is, uh, okay, I, ca I, ca I captured this as a reference that we can look at. Uh, there's a tab for crypto, uh, for some of the crypto that we've seen uh, supported within the Didcom um, uh, implementations. Obviously, crypto is something that, uh, well, it can be it can be a, an issue. Also, uh, capturing uh, the different protocols. I haven't put much in here yet, um, but point being you know, on didcom.org, you can go see a bunch of the protocols uh, for Didcom v2. Um, Aries agent test harness, I'd like to talk about a bit today, um, if we have time. Uh, that's something that I've been going through and uh, looking at in terms of being able to demonstrate support uh, across the agents. Um, yeah, we have did methods on here. Uh, obviously, if you don't, if your agent, for instance, doesn't support did peer well you know if if someone's expecting to make a, a did peer uh connection with you then that's going to be an issue so uh uh this this survey if we'll call it that is super young right so it can change in any way I, i'll appreciate any uh suggestions i would say maybe this tab is one of the most important right now uh which is the implementations tab obviously sigpa has uh uh, donated uh, a bunch of open source implementations. And so some of the, I guess, more success that we've seen between uh, agents is when they use the same implementation uh, of Didcom, right? So if uh, they both are using SIGPA, uh, maybe it's a little easier. Uh, and so, yeah, that's obviously intuitive, but the goal is for, you know, implementations uh, and maybe at some point have like a test harness that allows implementations to connect and, and figure out uh, if how they interrupt with with the other implementations. So I listed uh, Baron's um, Didcom TypeScript uh, here uh, with Animo uh, and he had posted that to Git. So we, we have that GitHub link now. Um, and then Akapai has its internal uh, work that, that Hakan and uh, Judith have been doing. 
and it looked to me that that's uh, related to ASCAR and um, yeah, so I've uh, I've linked to that as well. So any so we have the, the, the Veramo and the Brian from the Aviary implementations. Yeah, we can find the info there. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, maybe I will not put it on there yet. Let's put it here. Uh, let me change this to, yeah. Uh, look over and document. Oh, document, Baramo. Did come V2 impl. Uh, and then maybe this is a good time to talk about the TypeScript. Uh, we'll call it the Animo. Baron, do you want it to be the Animo TypeScript impl or the Baron uh, impl? It's in your repository, right? Yeah, I, I don't do the work under Animo. It's just my my own uh, okay. projects. You can just call it the Blue Buddy and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. fine. Or tag it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe Alex, this is a good time to ask some of the questions that you have for that. For the implement, like the implementation from uh, the Animo. Yep. Yeah. Well, Barons. Uh, yeah. He's he works for Animo, but he's doing the work under his own repository. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to reproduce the error right now. So give me a second because it's like a dependency yeah. issue okay. that I had like, on our end. So. Yeah, no rush. Oh. Let's let's do updates on the, uh, since we have Judith and Haken, let's uh, do some status updates uh, uh, for the Occupy yeah. work. Uh, yep. Okay. You guys want to give us any updates on... Uh, Judith, do just, you have anything? Just what you're doing and mm -hmm. yeah, what's recent in... from the implementation side? Um, yeah, maybe I can start because um, I already did a pull request for some work that we did together with a group of university students, and was basically changing or like making a new folder v3 for the message structure of v2 of Ditcom v2 in Akapai. So what now has not been done yet is actually to adapt uh, the encryption because right now it's not sure where it gets the information from which type of encryption should be used. And that's also connected to the problem of um, how the connection should be implemented because if you know from the beginning which connection is implemented or if it's, for example, if we also should update the version of out of band protocol for DITCOM v2, then it would be known that, okay, we're using DITCOM v2 now, and then we can also adapt the encryption to DITCOM v2 and then use like the message structure of DITCOM v2. So what has been done so far is just adapting the message structure or like enabling the message structure for DITCOM v2, but yeah, missing is encryption and probably it's already implemented inside the ASCA wallet. Um, this encryption, so it just has to be used at some point. So just at some point, it has to say, okay, pack the the envelope in with this <laughs> encryption type. But uh, the necessary information must come from somewhere, and this is probably would be the easiest way to have a connection for DITCOM v2, and then knowing from like which type of encryption should be used for the further com um, communication also. Yeah, we talked a bit about the uh, kind of connection. Uh... Yeah, it, how, how can from last week, yeah, we were talking about like a, a V1 connection versus yeah. V2. Uh, is there anything come of that, you know, yeah. over the last week? I did make a bit of progress there and I, I can add a couple of things. So first I, I shared the pull request right now on the, ch in the chat. Oh, so you can uh, put it here officially as well if you want. Yeah. Um, one area that I was looking into was basically to understand like, uh, okay, so we have the connection, connection IDs, connection protocols, uh, we have did exchange, we have out of band, and it actually occurred to me that uh, all these problems that occurred to me basically with the connection has been actually uh, talked about uh, in the Aries Interoperability Profile 2.0. And in a way that we are actually phasing out of the connection protocol. So it's not a part of the AIP 2.0. Uh, 
Uh, instead of that, we are using two protocols, one of them being the uh, did exchange protocol. So if we know the um, public did, if, the, if there's a public did, the did exchange protocol helps to just establish a connection between uh, two parties. And um, if it's supposed to be like a broadcast kind of uh, information again, where uh, the public that is not known, in that case, uh, the inviter basically can post a out of band message using the out of band protocol 2.0. And the way it seems like to me is that uh, in order to so we will continue using the uh, connection ID as as a concept because it's been used in uh, every uh, framework that I've taken a look into. I assume it's the same in the JavaScript framework. So .NET is using them, uh, Python is using them, Go is using them. And um, what what did exchange is already there as well. And out of band is already there as well. So I think what we will just need is to fix the message structures and create additional endpoints either to the existing, um, yeah, API uh, cluster, so to speak, or create like the 2.0 versions of them. But um, yeah, I think this is more about the question. Uh, maybe to the Akapag group as well, because it's really more in the internal area for uh, how, how Python implementation should happen. But yeah, I mean, if, if this was also like a question for you guys, like I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been already thought about. What are my next points or like not problems, but let's say, uh, uh, questions that, that actually occur to me is basically, I think we will need a new interoperability profile uh, for Aries. So we have AIP 1.0, which was about Indy, AIP 2.0, which was in the direction of Ditcom V2, but it's not completely right. And uh, I think we will need another interoperability profile uh, revolving around the Ditcom V2, which is missing right now. It's not there. I think that was Vaki as an idea, this uh, wallet and what's it called again? Uh, Vaki. Yeah, Vaki Pex. Exactly, wallet Vaki interactions. Pex. Yeah. Yeah, that, that stuff, but it is out of Hyperledger. I think it's it's not a part of the Hyperledger. It is the Essentialized Identity Foundation. No problem, but uh, we, we might still need an interoperability profile uh, for Aries basically too so that we can actually get along with the Aries implementations, first of all, using DITCOM v2, uh, but also include things that will help us to be able to uh, uh, create relationship with the software that are using DITCOM v2, but not using Aries framework, like uh, what uh, Edwin was implementing. Yeah, so basically the first issue you're gonna stumble upon is potentially message protocols, I can share a link here, which is open. Uh, we had a lot of uh, discussions on this little uh, repo right here, uh, where I uh, posted now, where we started with trying first and foremost, trying to figure out what are the messages going back and forth, uh, because the only way we now see it that this, uh, yeah, software will talk to each other is that you basically have a way to tackle multiple different messages. Uh, so is it, how is your flow? You can look at that last, the first one there. Um, the, the, uh, I mean, the, uh, how, number seven or number two, sorry. Number two. How is your flow? Uh, oh, here. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, gotcha. So you see that we had a flow that was almost similar to what Wacky has proposed, uh, but also Brian and everyone else, if you scroll further down, uh, have the Wacky uh, flow message. And if we're what we figured out is that since the Aries people came in and was not able to change up their messages, we had basically had to land on more profile debuts. Uh, and we decided to then split the groups into a group that can support this message flow. Um, and then that's where the first fork happened, basically. 
Uh, uh, so the question is then, what is issuance of credential in did come to our areas? Like it, it's, it's, it happens quite fast before um, you see that things are not starting to collaborate unless uh, both software support both mess expected message structures. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what this... do we want people to do? Do we want them to say, hey, implement all these messages? They mean the same, or uh, do we need to find them basically say, hey, guys, a really good profile is the wacky one? Uh, because the next step of this journey was, okay, now we need to deliberate in detail what's inside each, me each, each message. Then we suddenly saw that, hey, Brian's suggestions, he had too much. Uh, do we want to use presentation exchange that was like the first hinder uh because then you need to do that uh, and if you don't but you can basically probably uh identify what what this particular protocol will use of uh data attributes inside of it like will i use um presentation exchange message or what will i use doesn't matter but i think that there are these protocols are the first hinder that has to be clarified um, to be make interoperability. And that's right. probably where didcom.org comes in, but yeah. Just quick question. Uh, aren't the uh, message structures or the messages, which, which messages are to be sent uh, specified in the uh, protocols themselves, like issue credential or present proof protocol, for instance? Uh um good question maybe uh but uh if it is then wacky is not necessary anymore i believe wacky also specifies a lot what's inside of its messages oh yeah, yeah. This, this is connected to wacky so um uh, the v3 wacky, right i think yeah well wacky issue credential v3 and present proof v2 exactly That's yeah So yeah, that 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 was because I, I think the messages that are supposed to be supported are uh, written here. Well, yeah. I think three of them are required and one of them is the optional, the one that is uh, for negotiating. Um, right. Yeah, then, then the question comes again, Edwin, like, is this, yeah, it, it, would, it, would it still be, be a problem uh, in terms of what needs to be implemented if it's like already in the spec inside? Uh, no, not really, but then it just, um, then it comes down to how willing is everyone wanting to implement all different versions and the different actions that's going to happen when a certain message comes in. And if you're able to packet that inside some simple uh, libraries that basically consume some action helpers then you have kind of abstracted that at least for the next developer in line mm -hmm. um but yeah i'm not sure how to solve it it just it's quite big when we started to discuss uh, first of all you just need to decide on what profile to use then it might be easier uh but we kind of we crashed there at the first meeting so we had to fork two groups. Okay. Interesting. So I, I think that, that the um, wacky pegs or, or issue credential version three and present proof version three is, is a nice target. So we, we can all yeah. align to that, right? And that, that would be a, a nice goal because it's kind of similar to version two just translating the the it's actually the same right the, the same flow and the, the the body on the on the format of the message is the, the only difference how, how you put everything inside the body right mm -hmm. so maybe as a next work item i could maybe admit you that uh, take a look into which protocols are needs necessary for the didcom v2 profile because we, we, we will need to create a new interop profile 
I, I don't see any other way around, like whether call it Vaki yeah. profile or not, it doesn't matter. We will need to specify the protocols that uh, Aries is supposed to support, basically. Yeah, and, and we've been talking uh, last time in the user group of uh, DIF user group of Vidcom, mm -hmm. and it was also the guys from uh, Veramo. Uh, so we are looking to have, I think Wakipex should be one, well, just the, the, the goal, but also we, we are uh, thinking of having like an agent that start with the, like a regular trust ping protocol but to check that the trust ping is working and provide, uh, provide that all the envelopes and encryption is working. So trust ping should be one of those protocols that have to be on the on the profile. And um, Wakipex for me is, is just the, the goal, yeah, the, main, the, the initial goal. Right? Yeah. So, uh, excuse my ignorance just a little bit, um, but I feel like this is important to cover. So the uh, in the DIDCOM, uh, current DIDCOM spec, we have these defined profiles. Uh, and so Hakan's basically saying, well, <clears throat> the probably Occupy is up to this, uh, possibly this point with DIDCOM uh, AIP2. Uh, envelope RFC 587. It probably has both of these, right? Yeah, but we're still using RFC 19 mostly. So okay. that, that would be the productive state. Mm -hmm. So there are several RFCs tied to these profiles, but I'm fuzzy on what it will mean for this profile to be supported. Exactly. So Can, yeah, mm -hmm. let's can we discuss that a little bit as a group? Uh, I, I get to play the guy who just uh, is super fuzzy on this. Maybe you guys are sharper on it, but if I can get it, then then I think you know the documentation will be better. Because <laughs> I'll I'll try to uh, you know dumb it down for for people like me who I understand that that we we need these uh, we we uh, supposedly interoperability will occur uh if um someone implements this particular profile i just i'm not clear on yeah. what what does that mean for for aries here exactly so this is why i was suggesting that we come up with the profile but uh is the very very uh yeah basic of it like that would cover what uh, you did was implementing uh, in the past couple of months with the message structure of issue credential and present proof v3 protocols those would belong to for example this profile basic messaging 2.0 that would belong to this profile um yeah but, but for the rest i would need to take a look into it as well it's not in my i, I don't know them by memory but th th this is what we're trying to achieve right like so when we're using the DITCOM v2 profile we're going to use certain protocols that we can interact with each other and i mean the profile defines uh which protocols we align with basically and uh yeah 12 them would be issue credential and present proof v3 protocols okay to how um not even sure exactly what to ask here yeah but i'm I I think the, the profile that is written in the spec, did it come be two, is just that is telling that you just support this specification, only that. I think the, the other ones that we call the 80s interoperability pro profile includes more protocols. Okay. We should have an 80s uh, AIP, whatever, okay. that has the did it come be two, but so saying you support this specification plus these other protocols like the wacky packs like that okay That's so what I'm, what I'm do, do we think it would that literally be aip3 then or do are people familiar with kind of how this is growing as a as a scheme do we know if there's an aip3 already in the works that possibly lists not to my knowledge we do not have it yet but i think this is gonna be a a task for us as well okay maybe we can raise the topic to the in the edit call i see okay when i have like a profile for did it come be two yeah patients right okay all right 
Fair enough. Uh, let's see, raise. Oh. Okay. Good. Is there anything else we want to say on that or I I just feel so uneasy with it but you know, I'll I'll catch up over time hopefully. Uh and I guess yeah, there's just we there's work that we need to do to make this more concrete. I, I, I sense that the wacky pecs conversation that we just had, I mean, this, I feel like is getting the heart at the heart of what this group is meant to do, which is to help everyone to know the path of least resistance for, <laughs> for these interrupts. So, um, yeah, I'm, we have we have this guidebook. Um, this guidebook is really what we want to uh, improve. So, like the spreadsheet that I showed, even though it's focused on like Aries interop, the the real hope is that this um, this will lead to a, a guidebook that just makes it much easier for a bunch of uh, you know did come V2 uh, implementers like for the JFF challenge yeah. that they can just come through and read through this and literally um, uh, not have to go through all those pain points that, that, that they experienced. Um, so yeah, I, I guess uh, I think I, I, uh, Obviously, these discussions uh, revolving around this profile and what the Aries interop profile, I think, I think will will be the key. So, sorry, sorry, as I'm stumbling through that and processing, but uh, I am just not as grounded on the implementations as most of you are. <laughs> no worries. So, yeah. So maybe one information, I will also meet with uh, Stephen Curran tomorrow for the uh, Aries Cloud Agent Python uh, user group meeting. And yeah. at that point, I can also ask if there are any profiles that have been in the conceptualization for the uh, DITCOM v2, basically. And if there's anything, I would update this page, basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we definitely want to kind of spread awareness uh, through all these. all these. I'm sure Stephen, this is one of those things where we're partly trying to catch up on where everybody is uh, and their mental model, because obviously Stephen's spent quite a bit of time thinking about these kinds of things. But a, a lot of times what happens is there's uh, a lot of thought, a lot of talk. Uh, and then, but now, you know, you guys are doing the the real important work, which is doing the implementations and actually trying to make connections across each other or, or make didcom communications across each other. So um, we're just, yeah, let's continue to try to tie this together. I don't know how that will necessarily affect the, the spreadsheet and, you know, hopefully improve it. But uh, yeah, I, I will also try to attend this meeting. I've, I've been in at least some of the Acapug uh, meetings, so. Good. Okay. Um, Alex, how are you doing on, uh, do we have anything else that we wanted to say about the Occupy Didcom V2 stuff? No? Okay. All right, let's talk about the uh, Baron uh, TypeScript impl. Uh, Bar maybe Baron, if you wanna give us just a little update of, you know, kind of where you're at, what your kind of short-term goals are uh yeah yeah sure um so yeah i've been trying to create my own didcom v2 library based on the sigma one uh but with some small changes um so the idea is is that it will be in pure typescript uh without a secrets dits resolver or crypto provider so the sigma library 
uh, ships its own crypto, uh, which is fine, but it does mean that you have to have a different implementation for React Native and for the web and for the node environment. So I chose to take out the crypto, uh, take out the secrets resolver, which they also did, and take out the did, did resolver. Um, right now it is really in a state where I don't even export anything from the, the main index, so it doesn't do anything yet. Um, but I've been trying to, when, when, where I have the time to basically very naively recreate the Ditcom Rust library from Sigma, like down to the variable names. So everything is basically the same. Um, once that is done, so once, you know, you I have Rust. some tests. Yeah, the, the, the Ditcom Rust library. Okay, thanks. Um, so once that is done, uh, <laughs> when I have a matching interface, then I will see where uh, I think they did something wrong and I'll try to resolve that. Um, and the idea is, is that um, because there are, of course, with TypeScript, you have so, so many different environments that, uh, yeah, you can implement your own crypto for every specific environment. So with web, you can probably use web, web crypto, although I'm not sure if the ED24519 support is in there yet. Um, and I, th I will also probably provide some, uh, example, uh, crypto, uh, packages. So you have one for node and you have one for, uh, uh, the browser and one for, uh, React Native. Uh, but the first version will probably ship without anything like that. So you have to ship you, you or bring it yourself which can be difficult, but it does mean that the library will work in any platform. Uh, I, Sonora, you, you raised your hand. Is, uh, you, do you have a question or? Yeah, um, so I would just w warn you of <laughs> kind of copying their variables down to the, to exact what they're doing, because I raised this issue where a lot of their variables and data structure is not really following uh, yeah. standards. Yeah, yeah, I've picked that up as well. I, I the, my the document uh, looks very different than theirs, um, and I think if you use a the document where everything is just its own key and doesn't reference the uh, the verification methods, then it doesn't work. Yeah, so I had to write my own, like, let's call it mapper and for uh, and transpiler to kind of make sure the data I get from my standard types into theirs. And it basically doesn't match the, like, the variables are different than from the, the actual did doc variables. So I think it's yeah. a, a flaw that shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah, like most of the, I think the did document, I, I actually implemented myself because I also noticed that there were a couple of things weird um, with it and that would not be interoperable, uh, yeah. but it's exactly stuff like that, that uh, once like the library is like, completely copied, copied to TypeScript and I will go through stuff like that and, and change all those implementations. Um, and now I, I can see if I can create also a PR for the, the library from Sigma because uh, I stole almost all my structure and code from them, so I can give something back, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. So this is kind of that classic situation where if we use something as an initial reference uh, implementation, it's going to improve uh, your work, Baron, but it's also going to improve their work. And then, every, you know, pretty much everybody's referencing this uh, SICPA stuff uh, because... They were one of the first uh, to market, and you know they've shown shown some some good uh, momentum. So, yeah, this is uh, it's encouraging. Uh, uh, yeah, bottom line, I think. Um, uh, have they been fairly responsive uh, in the past? We've seen them being very responsive. So, I'm hoping they're. Um, they, to me, they respond to only one issue. And then they stopped, and that's about 19 days ago. Okay. Um, so I, I've 
the last like throughout the development I have raised a lot of issues and Brian has been uh helping to populate some of those because he's experienced the same stuff um so I don't know if it's stopped or not um but they have not responded from 91 and up um so yeah I, I pinged Daniel Hardman but he's out of the company so he's not yeah it's 19 days since they responded to an issue okay yeah, generally, yeah, definitely Daniel Hardman's uh, moved on. Uh, generally, we see activity from Victor and from Artem, uh, at least on the AFJ side. Uh, I've seen a bunch of activity from them. Any other contacts maybe that we have with the SIGPA folks? I, I don't think that Daniel Hardman moved on. I think he switched companies, but I think he's still quite involved with, uh, with Ditcon. And yes, he sorry. Income, but uh, I yes. pinged him and he says, I have no, no, what's say, no leverage to pull them to do uh, focus yeah. on issues. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Daniel's been super active uh, still in, in the DIDCOM spec and, and working group and things like that. So, all right. Yeah, good. Uh, Alex, do you have uh, your questions yet yeah, for Baron? I, yeah, I messaged him privately, but the, the problem was, uh, I mean, I'm able to install the library, but like you said, that there are no functions that are exportable. So whenever I try to import anything, it's saying that it cannot find any function that's trying to get imported. And yeah, there's like nothing is getting exported, like there's no index and all that stuff. So that was, that was the issue. Okay. So that sounds like, yeah, mostly just uh, you guys will go back and forth. That only uh, help validate for Baron, uh, you know, an external user, and then Baron's um, helping Sigpa to, uh, and, and Snore's helping Sigpa to, and I saw Brian as well. Yeah, post a bunch of um, issues. So yeah, hopefully the Sigpa library improves and uh, we'll, we'll keep, uh, Baron, is this, is it good uh, now for us to be uh, working with you, or uh, is it too early? What what what's your preference? Um, what, what what do you mean with working with me? The using the library, oh, or yeah, yeah, using the library. I mean, you you put it out there, uh, which we really appreciate. Uh, and yeah, I know that you're uh, you know actively developing on it. Uh, I just didn't know how useful it is yet for us to be trying to use it and giving you feedback and things like that um yeah so right now it, it would be completely useless to to use it um but i think once once i have something some functions <laughs> exposed uh i'll create a message in the discord for the, the comfy 2 group and saying that it's ready to be experimented with um but yeah it's it, it, it's still very very uh, every a lot of to do's um, and small things, uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's getting there. I think like a, a month or something, of like some weekend programming uh, should be enough for some first uh, uses. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Good. Um, okay. Anything else that we want to uh, discuss? Um, I'm happy to bring up the Aries agent test harness, uh, stuff, but, I, you know, I want to make sure that, uh, if, if you guys as, uh, implementers and, and active users, if you have something you want to discuss, let's do it. I think Edwin's hand is raised. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's an old one. For last, that's old one. Hmm. I'm yeah. Used to a stale Google, hand ring my hand when they <laughs> yeah good yeah so regarding the test harness i think we will know more once we know which protocols will be used like it's it's a bit um hard to think about the test harness before we think about the interoperability profile yeah so uh, i guess all i wanted to bring up is that uh i went i'm going through the aries agent test harness uh and c looking at what tests currently exist for yeah. didcom v2 and they have a tag 
um, for for tests that are didcom v2 related uh, and they have some scenarios built up for like out of band uh, version two and things like that um, okay. what I have what I haven't been able to do is find an agent um, that is uh, able to process those scenarios, those DIDCOM V2 related scenarios. So I'm fairly new to the Aries agent test harness, but I guess my first question out to them basically is how do I uh, find the agents that are uh, already supporting this, you know, this particular scenario or this particular test? Um, maybe that's obvious for people who, uh, you know, have, have done it before, but, uh, the best that I can see is, okay, I configure the, uh, you know, the current test that I run, I pick an agent, let's say Akapai, uh, and then I specify that, that specific test, which I did, I ran it, it didn't work. Uh, and I don't know, maybe I'm, there's, uh, multiple versions of Akapai that I can specify, uh, and then, for instance, we had talked about the uh, Aries uh, Go uh, framework as well. And so I was interested to see if that, uh, if those tests would pass. I'm not sure I was able to get even the agent to to run. But um, yeah, I guess this is this is my uh, initial exploration into it. Any thoughts on the test harness? Has anybody used the Aries agent test harness for DIDCOM V2 stuff? Okay. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So, so I'll I'll continue to um, dive in there, uh, and uh, I guess I'll just you know continue to report back. Basically, um, yeah. I mean, I could tell you guys uh, you know what tests are out there, but uh, it's fairly easy to tell. Uh, you can just search the repository for uh, the at didcom v two tag uh, to get a flavor, but. Um, yeah, eventually maybe I, okay. So part of the reason that this is important is for us uh, as a community to be able to quickly like plug in an implementation uh, and be able to uh, possibly, uh, you know, make a determination of how well you interrupt. But um, uh, also DIDCOM V3, that, that uh, I, I've, heard from Daniel Harbin and, and others that one of the goals is to make that a like IETF uh, spec. So like uh, uh, it, that's more rigor than than what it went through for for diff. And as part of that, you need to have a, a test harness um, that um, people can plug into. So maybe the Aries agent test harness is to um, is, a, is a higher level. Maybe there needs to be like a more specific thing for didcom v2 but um, i think it's a great place to start um, obviously because even talking about the the profiles uh the aip uh, one and aip2 profile variations uh those have tags within the aries agent test harness uh, and so you can get kind of a score uh, of how well you're doing uh in that so i think i think that dovetails well with um our our new mission, which is to kind of go out to the different user groups and talk about the DIDCOM v2 profile and what that means for the next um, or variations of Aries agent uh, Aries interrupt profiles. So last one, one question: How do you tell Akapai to run us with DIDCOM v2? Is there a flag, something that you can tell now? You use you should use the DIDCOM v2 or try this connection with the DIDCOM v2, but it's not uh, that implemented yet. No, so um, all, well, at least as best as I know, all, all that I can do is um, I can specify what agent in the Aries agent test harness that I want. Uh, and so I can specify the different roles as well, but I generally just say, you know, uh, minus D, which basically just says default. So all the roles are gonna be run by that particular agent. Uh, and so if I specify Akapai, I know that whatever, um, scenarios that I specify uh, to run, like I don't run the entire, you know, stack of, 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 of tests. I, you know, select some tests that I'm interested in, uh, such as the uh, out of band, or I can specify all the DIDCOM V2 uh, tests. So if I say, you know, run all the roles uh, as Akapai and, you know, run this, uh, run all tests that have the DIDCOM V2 tag, uh, it just spins up 
the Akapai agents, uh, and then it tries to run those scenarios with those agents, right, in each of their their roles. So, uh, and so that's not telling Akapai like, hey, Akapai, this is a didcom uh, v2 test. It's just telling the test harness to run only the didcom v2 related tests. So. Um, it's possible, actually, that maybe uh, Haken and, and Judith would know better than than me. Uh, oh, sorry, we have, we only have five minutes left, but uh, yeah, it's possible that they know. Maybe there's some configuration that I can do that uh, that 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 would help there. But um, yeah, right now I'm just seeing that those tests are failing, and um, yeah, does that answer your question, Roto? That, that, yes, that I'm sure what, uh, how how Akapai works in, in that matter. So, how yeah. it should work, or will work in the future with Didcom V1 and Didcom V2. Yeah, as best as I can tell, I mean, Haken and Judith can, can weigh in, but as best as I can tell, essentially, the they're going to put, as they're implementing this stuff, there's code that's saying, oh, this is a Didcom V2 message, so I'm going to start processing it as such. Yeah, exactly. So both of them will be supported, like Didcom v1 and v2, and there's the difference is going to be in the connection uh, entry within the internal database to uh, either uh, communicate with the uh, other corresponding agent with Didcom v1 or Didcom v2. And regarding the um, yeah, and this has not been implemented yet on Akapai, so the only outbound communication that is happening is like through the old Discom v1 envelope, RFC 019, I think it was called. Um, however, it will change depending on the basically connection tag uh, that that we, uh, it will support like multiple uh, Discom encryption envelopes, v1 for basically AIP 1.0, 2.0 and uh, yeah, it can be to encryption envelope for the other internal profile that is not defined yet. And the endpoints uh, is the same. I think they will be all in, uh, all there. Like issue credential v1 is there, for example. Issue credential v2 and issue credential v3, for example. All endpoints will be visible on the um, on the backend, basically on the API. So there is no start parameter where you say start. Well, I, I guess it would be possible to say, like I have a flag of like start Akapai Didcom v2, where you only see the endpoints related to Didcom v2. But um, in a general sense, I, I, it's not a necessity, but like it would be an additional addition basically. But uh, yeah, to make things a bit maybe simpler for people who wants to use the uh, Akapai only with Discom v2 and just don't even see what happened in the v1 world basically. But yeah, that would be basically an addition, not, um, not a requirement. Yeah, fair enough. We have uh, just maybe two minutes left because uh, I'll need to jump into another meeting. Any any final things? What can we do uh, also, you know, just to make this time more useful? I mean, certainly I think if we're reaching out to the other user groups and talking about the Didcom v2 profile and how that'll map into AIP, I think that'll be super helpful. Uh, what else? So... Yeah, I think this is what I would like to work on with um, at least to come up with a uh, draft of what could be a part of the interoperability profile for Didcom v2. And we can talk about it maybe next uh, meeting to see whether we are missing anything or uh, whether it's like plausible or yeah, just to have a, a starting point basically. Okay. Yeah, I think that would good. be useful to talk about in a group. Anything else that we will want to done uh, or or update for uh, by next week? I think that's a good that's a good goal to have. Uh, I, I I will also be wanting to update you all in terms of the Aries agent test harness. Um, yeah, just as I discover more, maybe I'll just learn that yeah, there's just uh, no support for that, and maybe 
I guess the big thing for me right now is to learn how to discover quickly which um, tests are supported by each agent. Like I, I have seen the interop page. Uh, I don't know if everybody's seen this, but uh, we have the ARIES interoperability information page that gives kind of scores uh, and, a, and even scores between agents. Um, but yeah, I don't see any of the DIDCOM v2 stuff listed and maybe in some way they are tagged so that they are not run as part of of this or maybe i'm just missing it but anyways i'll i'll, I'll have more information as we go anything else okay yeah great group today good to see everybody thanks for uh all the work that you're doing uh and feel free to post anything in the aries didcom v2 uh channel i think the more activity we can get going in there the better uh, that helps new people also to to have a handle on things. And uh, yeah, I'll probably see some of you at the DIFF uh, DIDCOM meeting that's later today. Good stuff. Uh, quick question. Like, is Do you guys have your own channel somewhere? Is it possible to bridge it between the DIDCOM Discord group or what's... Uh, you're talking about the DIFF one. Yeah, I mean, it's certain, certainly being active in there is good too. Um, <clears throat> we had kind of discussed if this should be a, a, a separate group. Um, I think if you have like more general DIDCOM uh, V2 stuff, I, I do think it's best to jump in the diff one. But uh, if there's things related to Aries specifically, uh, then maybe maybe jumping into the, the Hyperledger Foundation channel is, is maybe better. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Lance. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Gotta go. Bye-bye.